when people first think of Ashland, they might think of the renowned Oregon Shakespeare Festival, or they might think of Southern Oregon University, or maybe the fine restaurants, or of our beautiful 93-acre Lithia Park. Maybe because Ashland is so beautiful and charming, some people would rather not be faced with panhandlers or confronted with people in need holding up signs asking for food or money. So we thought we'd begin by asking some random people on a Thursday evening to share their thoughts about the homeless in Ashland. Welcome to Community Conversations, brought to you by Peace House. I'm Jordan Tresham. On our show, we'll be addressing prominent issues of concern in our community. Issues that may cause conflict. Issues that seem to divide us. Our show will attempt to bridge that divide. My academic background is in conflict resolution and diplomacy. Through my experiences, I've learned that no matter how different people may seem, there's always common ground. And if, in a conflict, we start from this point of agreement, we can work towards compromise and cooperation in a positive, respectful way. On this show, to help us, we'll be using a communications worksheet. This tool helps frame an issue in terms that are more approachable. I statements instead of you statements. Values instead of positions. It is meant to help address the concerns of all parties while working toward the solution. With us, we have the Chief of Police, Terry Holderness, thank you for joining us. Happy to be here. He has quite a bit of experience working on the issue of homelessness. Also, we have Karen Dayspring, thank you. Thank you for having me. She coordinates the homeless feeding event and also has experience on the street herself. Now, to the worksheet. Starting with you, Chief, from your perspective, what is this issue about? Well, I, I always like to, when I'm talking about homelessness, to frame the issue. The law enforcement is not, we're not in the business where we should be dealing with homelessness. It's really a social issue. But we are in the business of dealing with conflict. And where we run into these issues is because the actual conflict takes place between the homeless and somebody else, or maybe within it. And we're the ones that call because there's nobody else available. So we spend a lot of time dealing with an issue that we'd rather somebody else be dealing with. But um, it's, it's a complicated social issue. And uh, I wish the community had more resources to deal with and it wasn't always or so often put back on the police department. Thank you. What do you think this issue is about? I think it, the issue is about uh, people um, finding their commonalities, you know, finding out what it is that we all have in common as far as our needs being met, as far as having adequate food and a place to sleep and um, community, I mean, being able to coexist. Great, thank you. 
And also from your perspective, what groups of people are affected by this issue and what are their main concerns? Well, it's, it's interesting because within the community, I mean, we're as diverse as they come. I mean, people are from all different walks of life and paradigms and persuasions in this little town. And um, the homeless are not, no exception to that rule. You know, they're, they're, I, I like to say they're like snowflakes. They're each one just a, a walking example of uh, originality. And um, uh, they, um, they just need a voice. They, they need to know that they're being heard. Okay, thank you. Chief, what are the groups involved with this issue from your perspective, and what are their concerns? Well, I mean, obviously the homeless, we talked about that, but mm -hmm. everybody in town is impacted by homeless. We have an economy that's largely based on tourism. And the businesses here cater largely, at least during this season when Shakespeare Festival is in session, to tourists. And we get a lot of complaints on a regular basis about aggressive panhandling and things like that. And we get a lot of complaints about the business, about homelessness having a negative impact on their businesses. So there are a lot of different people involved in a lot of different ways. Uh, it, it's not as simple as taking care of the homeless because our ability to take care of the homeless is based partially on how well our economy is functioning. And those things aren't always, sometimes aren't conflict. Interesting. Thank you. Then also, what are some of the underlying values that maybe the business owners or the tourists have? What are they, in general, what do they value in a situation like being in Ashland, running a business, or coming to Ashland as a tourist? Well, I mean, obviously, if you're, if you're in business, you're in business to make money. If you're not making money, you're not in business. Mm -hmm. How does that impact a homeless issue? We're really looking at do aggressive panhandlers, do other aspects of homelessness have a negative impact on people's ability to do business? And the business owners certainly perceive that that is problem exists. From the tourist point of view, they come here to have a good time, to get away from wherever they came from. And um, I, they, once again, the aggressive panhandling, uh, those kind of things have an impact on their enjoyment. If they don't enjoy the experience of being here in Ashland, they're not likely to come back, which once again has a negative impact on our entire community. Sure, thank you. So what it sounds like to me is that the tourists, they value sort of basic happiness, enjoyment in life, and also the, the businesses, stability, income, these things are very fundamental aspects of humanity. Karen, from your perspective, what are the values underlying the, the homeless? What do they want in life? Well, I think what they're hoping for is that, for one thing, the public not view them as necessarily unhappy. Um, they are, many of them, what we call home free. And that they have elected to see the country, to travel, and to visit and put down roots maybe spiritually, but not plant themselves in any one particular location. Um, they want to be accepted. They want to be, uh, you know, just... Um, they're, they're not all the same, and they don't all panhandle. I know when I was on the street, I didn't. Hmm. I didn't. I was um, uh, trying to get a dollar per poster that should have been selling for twenty nine ninety five. something I designed, and I couldn't give them away. But... Um, uh, trading, work trade. I mean, they, there's so many out there that would be so happy to mow somebody's lawn or rake leaves just to have a, a shower. Hmm. Interesting. So it sounds like some of the underlying values are similar in that income, where to find that income to right. create stability for yourself, happiness, enjoyment in life. And it sounds like while they're looking for the same things with the diversity of the population we have, they just go about it in different ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chief, what are some of the most important aspects of this issue from the perspective of law and order? What, what needs to be taken care of from that perspective? Well, the first, the first duty of a law enforcement officer in a civil, in a democracy, is protecting people's civil rights. So homeless people have civil rights, business owners have civil rights, so we walk that fine line in between and we have to enforce rules that other people make, uh, the council, the state legislature, whoever, and we have to do that in a way that's fair and consistent to both sides and when sometimes those sides have differing values. And a lot of times we're in a situation where we can't make everyone happy because the business owner wants the homeless person to be someplace else, the homeless person has a right to be where they're at. Sometimes the homeless people or, or a person might be engaged in an activity that they think they should be able to but doesn't mm -hmm. follow the rules. So for us it's walking that fine line to, you know, respecting everybody's rights equally and, and doing so in a respectful manner. I mean, I think the biggest complaints the homeless have, and maybe I'm not the expert in that, but is that they're not often treated with respect in other places. So it's important for our officers and our people 
other representatives, we have Park Patrol and other people that work out there, that they would treat both parties with equal respect. Interesting. Thank you very much. Karen, from the perspective of homelessness, what is the main issue to someone living on this street? Um, being accepted. Hmm. You know, just right, right where they are and for who they are as an individual. You know, it's so easy to be uh, lumped into a category or... Um, you know, I mean, the, even the very word homeless, I mean, it's, it's, it's taken on some sort of a stigma, you know. It sounds like, to some of them, it, it, they say, why don't they just call us bums and get it, you know, I mean, be done with it. It's, 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 a, it's a state of affairs. It's not a, it's not a career. It's not, a, it's not a, uh, a, 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 an accurate description. You know, um, I mean, I think of um, Emerson and Thoreau, and I think of um, Jesus Christ himself. I mean, he had no place to sleep other than he was invited to stay, you know. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, we, what happened to the wandering minstrels of old? And what happened, you know, to the... The, uh, the gestures and, you know, th this town attracts uh, talent and I marvel at the, uh, the individuality of each of these people and their, their brilliance, their talent. It's just phenomenal. Interesting. Thank you. So it sounds from both of you that there's a complexity to the issue, but every different facet requires a different consideration that makes it more difficult. You can't lump them all as simply homeless, and as homeless, they all need certain attentions. It's not the case because everyone concerned has different values, has different rights within the law that require specific attentions to those details. Thank you. I'd now like to step away from the worksheet for a moment. I brought up this issue with a fifth grade class here in Ashland and asked them to draw homelessness from their own perspective. I didn't teach them anything on it, just asking, what do you think from the knowledge that you have of homelessness? And I'd like to go over some of those drawings now. Outside of the co-op and all these places, I always see like them with dogs and I always feel a lot of empathy for them because I love animals and I don't know, I just feel like whenever I feel bad or feel like I have a problem, I think of them and I think that um, how I'm so lucky to like, you know, be under a house and have good food and a family and go to school and stuff. I was just thinking about how some people do things that they really don't mean to do and usually people think bad of homeless people and really homeless people are just scared since they want help but they don't have any and some people think bad of them, but I think that they just want some company and home and be like normal people. Well, I thought about like people giving the homeless people money, which isn't really a good thing because that will teach the homeless people to like depend on them for money, and then what if those people aren't there anymore and then they won't be able to give them money. I think it kind of emphasizes the fact that they don't live in a very good condition. The storm cloud that only is raining on him. I think that emphasizes sadness. Okay, so I drew this picture because I sometimes when I see homeless people, I'm confused. Should I look at them or should I not? Because uh, they're in, they feel like they're invisible. So if I looked at them, I guess it'd feel like they're more in the environment. But if I looked at them, they might think that I am disrespecting them by staring at them and viewing that they, they're less fortunate. I would feel really ashamed of trying to ask people for their money because I don't have the money. I'd feel really ashamed and really shy. Well, I thought about how if you're homeless, there's no one that can really help you except maybe a couple people just like throw you a couple, uh, throw you a couple of dollars out of their car. But... You're pretty much alone all the time. So that's why I feel really sad about homeless people. Hmm. Interesting. Karen, what are your thoughts on those drawings? I think they're brilliant. <laughs> I think that the children really did an excellent job of capturing um, personality and uh, uh, it's situational, but it's interesting uh, perspective because 
uh, they've they've got eyes to see the these are people and that they have emotions and feelings and dogs. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. What do you think? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. It's it's fascinating that they do the issues. You see panhandling come up several times. Mm -hmm. Discomfort being around. What what am I supposed to do? How do I interact with the homeless? I think there's a underline in several of the pictures. The to make it sad, to, and yeah. there's rain clouds or some other areas or, or an ice feeling of isolation. Uh, I'm really surprised. I think they, they have a pretty good feel for a lot of the issues here. Yeah, yeah. The compassion really shines. Sure, definitely. There's nothing quite like a child's perspective. Now moving back to the worksheet, considering cooperation and compromise, Chief, to you, what would the best result be of a situation of compromise and cooperation? I mean, the best result we can get is to have some type of a system where people don't have to be homeless. Uh, on a more practical level, I would love to have the resources so that this wasn't just a police issue, so that when we were able to respond to things, we could do in a multidisciplinary mm -hmm. fashion so that we could have social workers, clinical psycho psychologists, people that were trained out there in the field dealing with people and uh, that we have the resources to do it effectively to actually help people get off the streets because I think that our goal here is to help people get off the streets, not to manage homelessness, but to fix it so we don't have the problem of homelessness or people have other legitimate options to homelessness. Interesting, thank you. Karen, what about you? The best result, what would that look like? In my estimation, I think um, that Although there, are, it, in my case, it was um, the issue of getting off the street. It was having a social worker come into our lives and enable us, you know, to take advantage of the system and what was available. And um, but there are, there's still that group that I just love. I mean, they are the home free. They are the ones that call the stars, the roof over their head, and and they're travelers. And and I know that. If, if it weren't for my a few little um, setbacks, drawbacks, and whatnot, I would love to put a backpack on mm. and and head out and just see wherever I landed in this wonderful country that I would love to see more of. And it's, it is a spirit of adventure that's there. There is a spirit of poetic nature, if you will. Um, so, I mean, I would like to think, I would like to see room for everything. I mean, if, for the person who wants to get off the street, to be able to enable them to do so. For the person who is passing through as a traveler and as a sightseer, allow them to see the sights. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you very much. Conversely, there's some circumstances that we could not tolerate in a society. And Chief, can you address some of those? What is absolutely unacceptable to us here now? Well, first of all, breaking our laws. We have a significant, well, we, we have a small group of people that do a significant number of violations. They violate our codes on a pretty regular basis. Mm -hmm. And that's problematic, I think, not just for the people, the other people that live here, but even sure. for the, the other homeless.